All right, um, I'm back to show you a couple ways that we might wanna add color to our drawings. Remember what I had done was I had selected some leaves. I went outside and found them. I actually placed them down and I carefully traced around them. I went over my pencil lines with a Sharpie. I used a thicker Sharpie for the edge and I used the fine point Sharpie for the inside. I have one of these done on regular copy paper. It's a thinner paper. And I have one of these done on a little bit harder or firmer paper. It's a heavyweight. It's what we use in the art room. Um, to show you the first technique, it's almost a printmaking technique. I have a piece of everyday household foil. Um, all I've done, I use today Mr. Sketch Markers, but any water-based marker, that includes your Crayola markers, you know, that you get at the store. Um, and none of these are really that special. I know Mr. Sketch are fun, but all I've done is colored on the foil and filled up the space that I think will be taken by the paper when I do the printmaking. Um, it is basically just, I've used the autumn colors, red, orange, brown, green, um, and yellow. I also need a spray bottle of water for this technique. It's just an everyday spray bottle and all that's in there is water. And I'm gonna carefully or lightly spritz across my foil and it's gonna activate that uh, marker ink and kind of give us a watercolor printmaking. We've, I've shown you this technique before. Maybe you've forgotten it. Maybe you weren't able to use it at that time. If you let it sit a couple minutes, you're gonna see that um, ink start to kind of blend together and swirl a little bit. Uh, you have to carefully take your um, paper and you're going to try to make sure you're putting it down evenly and flat across the area where, again, you've put marker ink and you're going to give it a little bit of a rub everywhere. Uh, try to do the best you can to make contact with it and not move it once you've put it down. Rub your paper all over from edge to edge and you'll have transferred that ink to the paper using water um, to uh, activate it. So now I peel it apart and I have kind of a cool watercolor effect on it. I notice I've missed some areas over here. I'm gonna go ahead and I still have some section of my foil that I haven't used. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't place my paper and pick up some more of that ink and fill in some of the areas that were left behind white. So it is a way to kind of, oh, I don't know, fix any problem that you might have if you have some areas where you'd like to pick up some more ink or add some more color. So I think that's one very fun way to do it. The other way I wanna talk about is using your ink or your markers as a watercolor um, paint technique. This is just a baggie, everyday bag, sandwich bag. And I put a piece of paper in it just so you could see what I'm doing. But I'm gonna color with marker on that plastic. That's the important part is having something underneath there like the plastic or under there the plastic that won't absorb the ink. It's going to let the ink from the marker just sit on top of the paper. I'm coloring small little sections of each of the colors I intend to use. I think this is a great way to be able to control and use an opposite color for um, the space around the leaves. In other words, the background. So I'm going to activate um, that and turned it almost into a paint. I'm using a regular paintbrush and I'm using just plain tap water. And you can go ahead and use this almost like a paint and fill in your um, leaves by painting it using this as almost a watercolor. Try to limit your amount of water. You don't want your paper to get too soggy or overdone because um, it is going to become almost transparent and a little hard to deal with. Remember how I said I'm going to use a cool color in the background so I can go around my leaves and have some contrast there. So this is another way to go ahead and add color. If either of these choices don't suit your or your supplies your family has, absolutely. You can go ahead and just use your Crayola crayons um, and color it in. I try to use a warm color for the leaves, cool color for the background. That will give you some contrast going on. Um, you can always use paint if you have it. This is my favorite brand of paint. I think you can get it almost anywhere. It's what we use in the classroom most of the time. Um, and it works really great. So I don't know what supplies you have and I don't want you to think you can't be successful just using the supplies you have, but this is two techniques to kind of alter the way you normally use marker and expand um, some of the ideas that you have to use supplies at home. All right, uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope your project turns out cool. Of course you can do this over and over again. Um, 
and uh, end up with some very different compositions. You can try them both if you have the time. So uh, until we see you again, have a great week.